Welcome, I'm your instructor, Domenico L. Cunningham, and I'm going to help you get through this little bit of introductory to 3D Studio Max. Along with the introductory that we're doing, we're actually going to be building a still life inside of 3D Studio Max. So, one of the first things we want to look at is let's actually look at some of the images that I want to be using inside, I'm going to use inside of my still life. So I'm going to go to my desktop and see where is my still life where's my folder at oh no that's not desktop there we go and still life so if I look at this you can see I've got a couple of images in here that I'm going to be using as references because no matter if you're drawing or modeling or whatever you need to have some references to go off of so I've got my wine glass my corkscrew my grapes and this white ramekin that we have in here and then also my wine bottle I'm gonna start with some of the simplest pieces first one of the simplest ones to build is going to be my ramekin right here and this is gonna actually not take me very long to do at all so this little white ramekin we're gonna build that and actually for the shape of this ramekin we're not going to bring this image in as a reference we're going to visually look at it and then get our little ramekin made from this so here inside of 3D Studio Max one of the first things you're going to be inundated with is the quad menu or the quad window or the quad viewport right the quad viewport what's really important about this is when you look at this you see you have top front left and then perspective these three are isometric viewports this is where you'll be doing most of your modeling and adjusting of your models and placement your perspective viewport is really meant for you to view your model so while you're getting acclimated to the program it's going to be easier if you use one of the isometric viewports to um, to model in and then only use your perspective viewport when you want to kind of view it and rotate around it and see it right so a little bit of some quick shortcut controls here for your camera in perspective if you hold down the left mouse button you're gonna pan your camera around so you'll see the little hand and you can pan your camera like left and right and up and down if you hold down the alt key and use your your uh, mouse button you'll be able to rotate your camera or orbit your camera around now if you hold down the control and alt buttons and use your mouse your left mouse button you can actually dolly your camera in and out or zoom your camera in and out now if you have a scroll wheel the scroll wheel will also um, act like the dolly tool and be able to make you and let you be able to dolly your camera in and out so remember that's left mouse to just pan it alt plus left mouse to orbit it and then control alt left mouse to be able to zoom in or dolly in and out All right. so the other thing that I have is on this right hand side I have my command panel almost all the commands you do inside of 3D Studio Max will go through your command panel one of the first things I want to look at is that right now I'm in the create set of my command panel so I make sure I'm in create and then I'm gonna make sure that I'm in geometry mode so create geometry and I'm gonna choose box so I'm just gonna get myself this little box right here and to make sure that it stays a complete square I'm gonna hold down the shift key while I drag this out let's get this hold down the shift and control keys so I'm going to hold down shift and control to make sure this drags out in a perfect square alright so I drag this out once I drag out the size of it I can let go of the left mouse button and then I can push up the height so I'm going to push the height of this up and that's it once you're done drawing your box I want you to hit Q on the keyboard Q is the end process button so you won't keep drawing boxes so if you hit Q, it'll end the process of drawing the box until you click on the command to draw the box again. 
So this is what we want to do. We have our box in here and we're in the create panel right now of our command panel. I want to click on the next icon in here. This is my modify panel. Inside of my modify panel I can see some things about my actual box. It shows me the length, the width, and the height. And it shows me the, le the length, width, and height segments. Now right now it's set to 1. If I turn this up, let's turn this up to like 5. And I'm also going to hit F4. So I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard. So F4 shows me edges. So I can see my edges. And you can see as I turn up this width segments and then the height segments, that's it basically makes more polygons so it breaks it down and makes little you know a couple more polygons in there for me I don't need those guys right now now this box I really can't do anything to this box I can't mold it I can't shape it I can't really do anything to this box so I need to be able to I'm just gonna move this to the center of my world um, I need to be able to do something with my box because right now I have this awesome box but it does nothing for me so one way I can do to actually change this into something that's editable I'm gonna right click on my box come down to convert to and I'm gonna choose convert to editable poly now when I do that you can see that the box over here in my command panel is no longer there now it just says editable poly and this gives me some sub some sub objects that I can actually manipulate so in my sub objects if I click on the little plus sign I have my vertex mode and this lets me be able to basically click on or select the vertices so all these little guys in here are all my vertices on the corners of this I have my edges the edges are in between the vertices so it's like a line segment in between two vertices and then the border I really can't show you the border unless I put a hole in my object. If I were to if I were to delete out this little this side over here and have nothing but these four edges around it, an open hole ends up being a border. All right? The other thing that I have in here as a sub object is I have polygons. So I have these polygons and then I have the element. The element is the entire overall polygonal piece. Okay? So let's get let's get down to making our little square ramekin. So I'm gonna do this very quickly. I'm gonna come to polygon mode because everything I'm gonna be doing is gonna be working with polygons and it's gonna make it very quick and easy to do to do this by using my polygons. Now remember <coughs> excuse me. When I'm going through this, I only want to use my perspective viewport to select and kind of rotate around and look at my objects. I don't want to model directly in it. I want to model in one of the other viewports. All right, so I've got this. I've got my top view right here, which is a good viewport. Now angle this so I can see underneath my piece. And I'm going to come in here and what I want to do to this is I want to bevel it. So I'm going to click on not the word bevel, but right beside it is a settings box. So I'm going to click on the settings for bevel and when I do that you can see over here in my top viewport which is the one that's selected and I know this is the one that's selected because it has this yellow border around it but inside of my excuse me inside of my viewport I can change the height of this so I can come in here I can I can click and hold on this little triangle click hold and drag left and right when I drag right it'll push it out more when I drag to the left it'll bring it in some and then I also have this outline feature and the outline basically kinda of bevels this in even more so I've got that I'm gonna change the height of this a little bit I don't want it to be too thick and so there we go I've got the I've kinda of basically got the bottom of my ramekin set up and I'm probably going to extrude this out just a little bit so we can have some height. There we go. That's why you want to look at this. That's why you want to kind of look at this stuff from different viewports so that you can actually see what this, you know, what this looks like when you're doing it. You want to make sure that you're getting a, a good, um, 
you want to make sure you're get, you're actually getting what you need and I can see on my front view right here this is the profile of my ramekin right so now that I have it the way that I want it I'm gonna hit the checkbox and now that has been applied to my model I'm gonna click on the top and I'm gonna press the W key on the keyboard the W key gives me my translate tool and with the translate tool I'm just gonna push this down and what I'm doing is I'm looking at the same time I'm actually looking at my front view to see how much that's being pushed down so I can look at the actual profile of my of my piece now with this still selected I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna choose bevel once again and this time with my bevel I can switch viewports and still not lose my selection by right clicking into the viewport so if I right click into these viewports you can see I still have my selection and I can go from viewport to viewport so what I want to do is I'm going to change the outline of this first I'm going to push this out near the edge and then I'm going to change the depth at which this goes into the other so I kinda got this let's kinda bring this in and then I'm going to hit apply so now you can see that I actually have my ramekin and if I look back at my picture that I had we can see that my ramekin looks very very close to the one in my image um, I can change this a little bit right here I can see this is a little, has a little bit more of a slope to it I can always go back and change that in my model I can just grab this piece and now I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard so when I hit R it gives me my my scale tool so the R key is my scale tool I can just kinda of scale this in from the center a little bit actually let's, let's clean this up a little bit more I'm just gonna scale this in some hit W get my move tool and kinda of pull this up just a little bit and I'm gonna come back and do another bevel I'm gonna click on settings again and push down the height of this a little bit more and I'm looking right here at my perspective at my top view or my front view rather and I'm looking at the depth of this and then once I have it where I want it I'm just gonna hit OK and I can see now my ramekin looks even closer because I have this little nice little edge that dips down and goes to this flat space and if I look at my image I can see that this has like a little bit of highlight here dips down and it goes to this flat space so I've got my ramekin made the next thing I want to do is actually work on my wine glass and I'm gonna continue that in the next part and I'll be right back after this <laughs>